The following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. You know, out in Nevada near the silver mines, there's a kind hearted woman. She's looking so fine, always taking care of her community. Bringing folks together is her cup of tea. She's out on the road and all over the web with a big smiling heart. It's about town, Deb. And welcome to this week's episode of City Talk. I am Debbie McCarthy, your host, and we are at the National Automobile Museum in Reno, Nevada, right by the river, which I love it here. We just love our town. And I'm excited because we have a brand new feature. It's going to be the second Wednesday of the month. You're going to be seeing these two beautiful gals who are doing amazing stuff for our community. And they're also a new sponsor. So we have Raquel Riggle, co-founder of Home Envy and also the Family Hope Project. Welcome, Raquel. Well, hello. Thank you, Deb, for having us. Well, you've been on a few times. And her and I, we're going to talk about we go kind of craziness back. But we have another gorgeous woman right across from me. And if you're listening on Spotify or those others, you'll just know she's across from me, Nisa (laughs) Butler. You are founder of Family Hope Project. And this show is really going to be about hope and how you two came together and how we came together and how um, my, my slogan is together we're one heart. And I really feel this does fit what we're doing. So we want you to listen in and we want to thank our sponsors and first thank our newest sponsor, Home NV and Family Hope Project. So we're glad that you two have teamed up. We also want to thank Crystal Basin Sellers. We want to thank um, Wild River Grill. We want to thank Kim Surratt Law Practice and Hall and Rye Plastic Surgeons. And of course, phoenixmedia.us, Christian over here for manning the fort and keeping us going and caliber hair and makeup and Dee Dee James for my song. So we're just going to get right into this. Normally I say like what's been happening during the week, but you know what? I'm not even going to talk about that because this is really cool stuff. And you guys got some really good news just the other day. So Raquel, I'm going to let you take over from right now because this is your, both of your visions. And I'd love you to chat a little bit more about how you partnered with NISA and just do it. Yeah. So um, the Family Hope Project, Nisa, and you can kind of speak to this probably a little more, um, is just kind of Nisa's brainchild. And it really kind of culminated because I was working on something separately, um, the Garden of Freedom, which I've just really been into gardening and, you know, and I wanted to give back to the community in a a way where people would have food and some kind of um, place to go to, you know, have food that was healthy to eat. And she had come to me and said, this is what I'm doing and this is my vision. And um, why don't you tell them a little bit about what your thought was, Nisha? Sure. So, yeah, Family Hope Project, it was kind of born out of the, uh, I work with vulnerable populations in our city, in our community. And so um, something I had noticed is a lot of the resources and access to resources, it's very limited, like um, the Monday through Friday, eight to five schedule. And so in my day job, I um, I do home visiting, resource referral, wraparound case management, um, and connecting families to resources. So there's times that we've shown up at um, like a resource center and it's the doors are locked at 3 p.m. or, um, you know, they close at 4.30 and it can be hard to, like when you're in crises, to... To be only in crises during that time of day. Crisis, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of it doesn't happen that. like that in real no, life. Or it's really compartmentalized. It's like, you know, you have this project that's going to help you here or this project if you're going to help you there, but it's really specific. And so this is really opening the doors to every yes. crisis and trauma and things that you can do. Right. So it's kind of just born out of the knowledge that like crisis doesn't stay within business hours. And so it got to the point where it was like, you know, after work, I was um, connecting families to resources or over the weekend, um, some of the children and families I work with, I knew were um, in crises or it was gonna be harder Monday morning to find them because I knew that they were, you know, getting displaced over the weekend, living in a motel downtown or, you know, and now it's just with all the gentrifying and all that. So um, yeah, or be, couch surfing yeah, or living in their up. car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? So I'm sorry. What's really sad is you said it's going to be hard to find them. Yeah. We are so blessed to be able to know where our family is. Right. Yeah. 
yeah. where they live. They have an address. Right. They have a home. They have somebody to watch over them. Somebody to take them to doctors, give them their, give them whatever. They have, a phone, they have a phone number. A phone number. phone number access so to Wi-Fi. So you're yeah. having to find them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't even know how you go about doing right. that. So you're project is going to help with that. I'm assuming. Yes. And be like a one-stop shop. So instead of like getting diapers on mill street and then having to catch the city fair to, to change buses, which is maybe three buses. Oh yeah. With maybe two toddlers or bags of groceries or bags of clothes. Um, it will be like a one-stop shop where we're providing resources like, um, of course, case management, but access to food, clothes, um, gas cards, yeah, gas cards, transportation, internet, school supplies, all that in one, one place, a garden, a garden where they can access healthy food, yes. nutrition yeah. classes, parenting Grief classes. Grief circles. I mean, we have kind of a all-encompassing yeah. concept going on. Um, Aerobics classes. Yes. Yes. Maybe Ooh. some yoga. <laughs> and we got really great news yesterday. That's what I want to hear about. Well, yes. well I applied okay. for 501c3 in November and we just got official yesterday. We got our official letter. So the IRS has been backed up, but they we got through, there. And so now we're official of- <laughs> 501c3. Yep. And now you can continue to provide hope. Absolutely. And make a huge difference. Yes. That is really important. Absolutely. So I know we just have a couple more minutes in this segment, but I would like you to to share a little bit more how you two got connected. Like, absolutely. Because, you know, with you with Home NV, I mm-hmm. mean, it's, you know, you're amazing at selling real estate and bringing families to uh, to their home. Yes. And I, you know what? We didn't say what the title of this segment is going to be well what we've decided on is where the sidewalk meets the home because that is all encompassing i mean it can be buying your new home and getting to the doors it can be anything it's getting out of a car and into an apartment or into some kind of transitional living that you have a home and you're getting to the door and then once you have a home, we want to try to keep you in the home. Right. Absolutely. So if you're going through hard times, you, the project is going to be able to help them with that. Yes. And, and we want to start it before it gets. Right. It's prevention, prevention. crisis prevention and family preservation. So I love it. We're going to take our first break. and we come back, I want to hear more about the story because it's all was about the story with us. So hang tight. It's about to end up a city talk. We'll be right back. Now more than ever, family matters, and Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption and surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law Practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting lawyersforfamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. After having my child, I was just thinking that I wanted to kind of get back to the size I was when I was breastfeeding. When I first came in, I didn't know if I wanted to go under or over or what size I wanted. I feel like they really took the time to educate me on all of my options. I've had a bunch of different questions. Paul himself has called and checked in with me. I was really expecting to be in a lot more pain than I was. It it was a lot more pleasant than I was expecting it to be. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first. Name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you're left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. The storms are bringing me a baby brother. 
Sure, we can do this together. All right, let's go. Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. She's out on the road and all over the web with a big smiling heart. It's about town, Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now back to the show. And welcome back to City Talk. This is our second episode. We're at the National Automobile Museum. Raquel, over here, my co-host. Thank you, Nisa, for being on the show and for being part of your new show, which is a new feature that we're going to be having the second Wednesday every month. Where the sidewalk meets the home. I love it. So we want you, if you're listening, if you um, have a love for connecting people, if you have love for helping in your community, if you have a love for kids, for adults, anybody that might need a little bit of a hands up, a little bit of extra love, a little bit of kindness. Or a um, story to share. A story Reach to out share. out to Nisa and I. We want to hear. And, um, but I, I want to also go back to Ra- Raquel because we literally, I don't know, the last many years, we're always out and about and doing videos and oh, yeah. sharing stories, lots of stories. Yep. And, and through all that, I hadn't, you know, you also have another life besides being a mom and sharing stories. You're out there providing the opportunity for people to find that perfect home with NV, with your home. With real estate. So tell a little bit about why that's so important to you and that how that you guys connected to bring both your dreams together. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I came from a really meager background. My upbringing was not, um, you know, charmed by any means. So this is kind of a very near and dear subject for me and very near and dear, you know, um, project that we're working on just because I I wasn't given, you know, the golden path. And I had to kind of figure things out on my own. And I think I've shared this with you before, you know, like when I had my first son, I was 21 and I, it was me. <laughs> I had to figure out my life and figure out how to provide for him and give up my youth basically to be the mom that he needed. And um, that's not always the easiest to do. And, you know, coming from the background that I did, I, I was born and my parents did not have they brought me home to a motel, not a hotel, a motel. And I, I don't even have baby pictures. Um, I mean, it was just so, such a, a different thing. But yeah, so it started there. And then, you know, I just kind of, as I progressed and aged and got into life and realized that I could make a difference and hopefully make the, a change in somebody's life, one life, um, it became more and more passionate and it just continues to grow. And and I just feel like I'm on the right path with where we're going with this. And I think that through real estate is where I met Nisa initially. And um, we've been friends for over 20 years now, <laughs> which is really dating me. <laughs> Maybe her too. So I'm not feeling so bad. <laughs> but, um, and she's, we've talked about this extensively where I was born and we, I, I grew up in Sun Valley and she grew up off of Neil Road. And so, like, we kind of just stayed sequestered in our own little areas, um, not and knowing not to go past those boundaries. And we would have been best friends growing up as little kids, you know? Yeah. We, like you mentioned, like, without those boundaries, like, when you're kind of raised in um, a neighborhood that's more marginalized, it was like, that was my mom's best gesture to, like, keep us safe. It was like, you don't, you don't cross those tracks. Like, you don't, like, my brother and I were like little brown kids running around. My mom was a single mom. And so, yeah, she would always know how to kind of keep us safe without doing that on her own. So the same, and it just goes back to like, like we have these experiences as children and then as adolescents and then as women, right. As mothers. And it's like my sidewalk kind of met your home in different ways. And it's like our homes, there's so many ways that we can all relate. It's like, um, family dynamics, they feel different if you don't know a different group of people, but we have so many similarities. We grew up probably with the same fears or the same, a um, lot of the same fears, Uh same um, boundaries and just the same, 
just ways that we kind of went about life. It's like we separate it culturally, but shame is the same in every home and love is the same in every home and fear and hope are all the same. Right. And right. so every family has those experiences. And then we meet each other and find out like, wow, we're very similar. And so we can relate to a lot of the families that we're working with and reaching out to. So I'm going to jump in here because if you're listening, we are grateful that you're listening, but I want you to understand what you're hearing. You're hearing here's two women side by side who both the time when they were growing up had this, the same same, what, what was the similarities, right. but if you're out there, you know, you could be in a neighborhood or you can be a young mom and you're thinking the same thing. I have this child and I want to keep them safe. And, and how do I go about it? And to not feel alone and feel like, how am I going to do this? So really during this conversation, I just want people to realize that you can contact them both. You can contact any of us absolutely, and they will help find those resources. Cause I think it's a very important topic that we're open and honest. And thank you for sharing your honesty about, you know, growing up and coming home into a motel. I think people see all of us around and they see us as our adult life. They right, don't realize that right. we all have stories growing up and we don't want to let those stories define us. I mean, they're a part of who we are mm-hmm. and we're never going to forget it, but we can overcome that. And right. that's what you guys are trying to help this, the youth overcome some of this. And overcome it at an earlier age. I mean, I think it was like 40 when I turned that corner when I was like, huh, okay, well, I don't have really? to have Not this. Not until 40? Well, you know, you just have this imposter syndrome. You know, oh, you carry yeah. that weight with I, you I, all I the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, you just walk into a room and you just feel like you don't belong or you shouldn't be there. Or was I really invited? You know, I mean, the really, it, it's kind of a raw feeling. Yeah. Like it, um, experiences like birth to five really shape us. And so they help us to survive, you know, like how our brain works is like these experiences, like, am I safe? If not, then you go into like fight or flight or freeze. And that yes. actually, you know, like you mentioned, like you were 40 when you started turning that corner and I'm about to be 40 and I'm like, I still go into that freeze mode. And I realize, and like, this is not, it's not the real situation. This is like my childhood experiences kind of shaping the way that I'm reacting to these people or this group or the scenario. And I am welcome here and I do belong here and everybody in our community belongs here and can contribute in a like very special way. And that's the difference is like some people just get stuck, like unable to contribute to the community. It's sometimes it comes down like, are you in some way, for lack of better words, like a burden to the community or are you contributing in a, in a way? And what I love about Nisa is she had shared with me, she had done, what was it? You were fostering a child or, or yeah. So she was fostering a child and, everybody was more concerned about, you know, what's going on with the child, what's going on with the child. And they're all acting and like kind of like reading their textbook. And she took the time to look at the mother who probably felt like a complete imposter in that moment and said, what does your child like to eat? (laughs) And like included that mother and made that mother feel like she was the mother. She wasn't just somebody sitting in a room and all of this is going on around her. Right. Yeah. So I'm a licensed foster parent. And so, yeah, I've had a couple of foster children. This was this situation was um, where it was like a meeting, you know, where there was several different agencies represented and mom was pretty used to this. And so, um, but she's the mother and that's the most first and most important teacher in a child's life. And she's the expert on her child. And I just feel like kind of the way the system is set up is like, we kind of strip this power of a mom. And what happens when you do that? Like we act, if you strip my power, like I would act less and less, like, I guess I don't know what my child needs. And I would back up, back up. And then you have somebody like struggling with addiction, which is very common in the foster care system and bio parents. And so um, what would give anyone hope to stay clean or sober when you have almost every agency and then foster parents like telling Telling you you're not okay, you're not the expert on your child. Yeah. So genuinely, I wanted to know what this child loved to eat. And I knew like anybody at this table knows that would be his mother. But think about how empowered that woman felt. And she changed her entire demeanor. Yeah. Of course. From that moment forward. Yeah. And I think she probably still thinks about that moment. I mean, I know that there are things that I've thought about throughout the years that have been like aha moments. And I know there are people that I can like genuinely go back to and say, thank you. Thank you for giving me that opportunity or thank you for giving me that chance when even I didn't know I needed it or I didn't have that available to me it's like humanizing somebody like we were just talking about this like what like on accident implicitly like we kind of dehumanize somebody like maybe me being from nail road and you from sun valley like those aren't humans over there i'm not supposed (laughs) to be over there but the entire time we were humans we were very similar we understood these emotions and these things that we have so just yes basically humanizing this 
mother at a meeting that she felt so dehumanized. Well, I mean, years. and Nisa just graduated from UNR recently with two masters. Wow. I mean, which is amazing because she did that. She's been working <laughs> on that for what, 14 years now? Long time. Yeah. So, it's, so it's never too late if you're listening and you want to go back to school. It's never it's too true. late. You have to follow your passion and your dream. And, and by you doing that, you're affecting so many lives in a positive way. So that's incredible. Thank so you. congrats. Yes. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> go pack, yeah. back the pack. <laughs> so if you're listening, we're, we're saying back to pack because we're, we're in Nevada. So UNR. We should probably let people know that. <laughs> University <laughs> of Nevada, Reno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are filming and recording in um, Nevada, in Reno, Nevada. So, so when we do talk, a lot of times we are talking about um, our community, meaning the Reno, Carson, Sparks, this area. So, but our communities are just like your community. So wherever you live in, you're going to have the same stories. Right. Because we are all connected. Right. Absolutely. I mean, poverty doesn't stop at our border. sidewalk or our door. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're back to the door. See, that that was a great show title. I love it because really it is about the walk to into the door. It really, I mean, and, and once we get into the home, I just want people to know that throughout the, the different segments that we're going to be having, it's not just going to be us. We're going to be bringing in people who are experts in the field and we're going to help you with, you know, help you learn and help you get, you know, and a lot of stories. We have people that are yeah. success are stories share also. Their stories. So mm -hmm. we're excited about that. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to continue the conversation. It's about Town Devo City Talk. After having my child, I was just thinking that I wanted to kind of get back to the size I was when I was breastfeeding. When I first came in, I didn't know if I wanted to go under or over, or what size I wanted. I feel like they really took the time to educate me on all of my options. I've had a bunch of different questions. Paul himself has called and checked in with me. I was really expecting to be in a lot more pain than I was. It, it was a lot more pleasant than I was expecting it to be. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> <laughs> text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. I spend a lot of time in the backyard, and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And in 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow right where you live? That it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals and Wheels America and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. You know that's what you said. Come on, let's have some fun. 
with About Town Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to City Talk. I'm About Town Deb, Debbie McCarthy, your host, with my co host, Raquel Riggle. Home Envy, right next to me. And you're yes. also more than Home Envy. I am. You are co founder of Family Hope Project. Family Hope Project. And our other guest, which is not a guest, we have two co hosts. So I'm going to let you take it. Oh, before the quote, the quote. And then we're going to take it to Nisa because we've been talking about all this good stuff they have planned. But we want you to vis- close your eyes and we want you to vi- visualize what it's going to be like and how many lives are going to be affecting. So I'm going to do the quote. And then I'm going to take it back to Amnisa and let her describe what they're doing. So each of us has a fire in our hearts for something. Find it and keep it. Mary Lou Retton, let us find our, for me now, let us find our passion and let it shine. And both you women right here sitting with me have found your passion. You've already had your passion. A fire has been there for a long time. It has been there. I can, I can say that with, I know that. Complete honesty. But sometimes the fire has to kind of like slowly burn before right. it's ready. And I know with Nisa, I, I want you guys to sit back wherever you're at, whether you're in your chair, taking a walk and listening. I want you to visualize what you're going to hear about their dream and their passion for when the doors do open. So it's all yours, Nisa. We're okay. ex- currently accepting good vibes. Yes. All vibes right now. <laughs> Here we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Family Hope Project, um, it the dream and what's about to become a reality is um, just like a, a home zoned commercial so that families or individuals, and when I say family, I don't mean like the nuclear family of a mom, dad, and, you know, brother, sister families come in all different forms, Absolutely. And, um, but every family has their strengths. So it's going to be a place that um, kind of infuses and nurtures these families' strengths. And it'll be a, a house zoned commercial. So like a home with a kitchen, a living room, a yard, we'll have basketball courts and uh, family game nights with board games on Fridays. Every night you can come um, have a meal, a home cooked meal, um, or we can do pizza. And every night we'll have a different theme, so or a different class. So Tuesdays will be um, parenting classes. Wednesdays will be aerobic classes. Um, Thursdays will be grief circles. Fridays will be family game night. Um, sometimes we'll have you know arts and um, or live music or poetry classes. So um, just and you can come every day or you can come one time or you can come once a week and, um, or always drop in, but you can always find wraparound case management and, um, a soft handoff for resource referral. So if there's a need that a need that you have that we can't meet, we will, um, walk you to the next, um, resource that we know can. And a warm handoff means like, we'll know the name of the person from another agency that you're going to call. We won't just send you off with this 800 number and hope that you take a number in a, uh, fluorescent lighting and feel like it's cold in there. You Next. don't know when they're going to call your name. Right? One of the things I really like about working with Nisa is um, she's really hands-on like I am. She's very much a hands-on individual. Um, on the weekends, you'll find her dropping off food or, you know, somebody has a um, a job interview coming up and she is their their biggest cheerleader. She's their main supporter. She's bringing them like professional clothes that she had donated. Her garage is packed to the brim with things. And she's, she's like the ice cream man. <laughs> she just shows up with this stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm always like out searching these deals and she always makes fun of me because she's like, oh, you're just out shopping the, <laughs> the deals. And I'm like, yeah, I'm out shopping the meat. <laughs> So, you know, I try to like help her out and get food so that, you know, people have food to eat. And but she's she's at their house. She's during COVID, during all the things, she was still connecting with these people on a human level. And she's bringing a face to what a reality can be for somebody else out there. And I I really, truly, I, I admire that about you. Thank you. Yes, you always tell me the five for five dollar deals at whatever, <laughs> whatever store. There's five for five dollars. Buy yes. one get one free on the meat. So, <laughs> well, you know, when you, when you were saying on the meat, I'm like, what is she talking about yep. on the meat? Yeah, like, like steak is, or is that like a, a, a <laughs> Saturday Night Live thing or something? No five coupons. Five. Ah, girl, it's all coupons. <laughs> well, send me some coupons on the way. So with this home, 
what are the hours? Because, you know, you were, you were talking earlier about, you know, a lot of them people go and the doors are closed. Right. You're not sure the hours. The hours may change. Yes. Right. So what are the hours? So and how does it'll that be work? 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Oh. And we'll also be a safe place, which is like, you know, a federal um, agency where oh. you could come if you're under the age of 18. And uh, so we'll always be on call. So if, if you need a safe place, um, this is for like runaway youth or even ch- young children. Um, or domestic violence. Yeah. Yeah, uh, things like this. So we will lock the door at 11 p.m. Um, we're also going to have a karma box in front of the house Thank if you, you need <laughs> um, hygiene products or um, food, non-perishables that will be available yeah. Yeah. 24 hours. Another thing that um, Raquel mentioned is that she's the founder of like um, the Garden of Freedom. And it was yes. so funny because when I came to her with this dream, I said, like, I have this dream about like a community garden there, too, where like families can access this healthy food, fruit and produce, even fruit trees. 24 hours a day. You can always come and get healthy food from the garden. You don't have to do an intake form to get food. There's enough for everybody. So another thing about the garden will be, um, sorry to like speak on this Raquel, but just you're that, good. Um, a lot of people don't have work experience and it's hard to get hired or say like, we don't have managerial experience. And so I will always sign off. If you, you know, agree to a couple hours a week, you show up on time and you do, and you help me with the garden because I don't have a garden green thumb and everybody, I don't either. Yeah. So some people do. <laughs> and so if you want to come work the garden, you can get, um, hours for that, or I can uh, be a reference for you. Also community service hours. We can always sign off for that for high school students, um, college students, and even, um, like court ordered hours. Wow. Right. I mean, isn't this I, great? I, Seriously, you guys have put so much thought into this. I can tell it is that this is a dream and a passion that's been going on. Yeah, for this, a long this time. isn't something where it's we're just kind of like, oh, hi, we're going to do this. This is like a passion. This is a need almost for me to change yeah. somebody's path. Yeah, well, you, you were talking, you're talking about the garden aspect of it. I wonder if we could um, hook you guys up with, um, with, um, urban roots or some places like that. Right. Oh that, yeah. I mean, uh-huh. but I mean, there, there's so many local restaurants, there's mm-hmm. so many um, businesses that want to give back right and this could be right. a way that they could come in like a chef could come in and do like a cooking class, a cooking class for families, i mean yes. i feel like there's lots of ways that that about town dub as a connector can connect because i i know there's so many people out there that may not have the funds to give but they have their talent yes. and time and talent is so important so if you are listening and you do have those time and talents, you know, please contact you guys. Absolutely. I We're feel like any connection, any connections, because connecting is what does it. You know, we are together in this community. And this is Reno. That's what we do. Reno definitely. We does rally that. around our people. And, you know, especially right now, we're faced with so many, you know, homelessness situations. Um, and one of the things that I don't think people really understand, you know, they're they're so um, going to real estate just kind of switching gears a little bit, you know, they don't think that they're credit worthy or they don't think that they're worthy of having a home or able to get a home because they don't have a down payment. But there are a lot of programs out there, like grant programs that will actually help you, you know, with your down payment assistance that you don't or are not required to pay back, you know. Um, and I can connect you with lenders that would be able to pull your credit. And so what if your credit's not perfect today? It's going to be perfect at some point. Well, they'll devise a plan with you and then loop me in and we'll continue to work with you. If Even if it takes two years to get you to your, where your sidewalk, where your sidewalk meets your home, it'll happen. We will mm-hmm. get you there. And, and that's a huge part of what Nisa and I were talking about too, is be, a lot of people, you know, they will lose a birth certificate or they'll have some kind of um, reason that they can't get hired. It's not that they don't have the skill set. It's that they don't know how to get the, the things that HR will need in order to start them on a job path to get to where they need to go. And so we're able to help with those resources too. Wow. It's totally, it's, it's, it's incredible to see that, you know, you guys, you're about so many different things. And I love the way that you're connecting the home NV as well, because with your experience with helping people get that home with the credit checks and with like all the things you're talking about, some of those are the same needs that if you're a family and you're a mom and and you don't have those records or like maybe your parents lost yours and now you don't have that birth certificate. You don't have your, your, you know, college, this or your high school diploma. Or you don't know your social security number or how to get it. You know, I didn't even think about that. That is a, I bet that happens a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And Lisa, wow. like she'll, she'll take people to, you, you know, we look at things like welfare as like a, a step up, like this, not just, you know, oh, this is where you're going to be. You know, this is, it's 
we use it as how, as the system has designed it. You know, you wow. use that as your step up and okay. And Lisa will take you there or I'll take you there and we'll help you get through that paperwork, you know, and you don't have to have that embarrassment. You have a, you have a partner, uh, you have a person mm. to, to help you. So with all this said, it's all about the stories. Is there like a story that you can share before we go out on this break and then we'll come back for one more break um, where you have helped somebody Raquel with their home or with a story or with paperwork or where they, Oh my gosh, I can't do this. But you're like, you sat down and said, I can help you. Um, I, you know, I do that pretty much on the daily know with, with real estate, but I'm sure Nisa has some stuff that she's done. Yeah. That's more granular. Sure. Uh, I have, I guess I'll share. I have a few, but um, I can share a story of a young mother who's now 22 and she has a four year old. So when I met her, she was pregnant and she was intravenously using and had planned on terminating her pregnancy, but decided about five months in that she was going to keep the baby. And so um, we just wrapped her with love and resource. Well, I wrapped her with love <laughs> and resources. And um, I understood like her passion was like, she loved to do her makeup. This woman was so beautiful. And, um, and so she went on to have the baby. I was able to be there with her. And today she, she went on to um, like beauty school. And today she has an apartment. She's married now, but it, it's all about like those close interactions with baby um, from and she's, birth on. And so right. she, since she had this security, she didn't have the stresses of being, um, unhoused or in a domestically abusive relationship or with addiction, it helped to those first bonds with mom and baby um, because they're so crucial for abuse and neglect and the what puts a child at risk for that. But so, now she's almost she's ready to purchase a home where I'll step in right. and be able to help her get down that path. So we're continuing that sidewalk to meet further yes. homes. Yeah. Wow. So it's definitely getting, in, it's not just helping them along the way, it's getting it to open that door yes. and to get there and feel and yeah. do it with confidence yeah. and, you know, and not just like help did it. today and just be done helping it's help all the time. That's what you have to do. It's, it's a journey. It it's is a journey to it get, is. it's a journey to get to yeah. that door. Forever. And, and sometimes <laughs> Actually, you could be saying at the door and you're like, I just can't open it. Yeah. Like, cause you're just afraid yeah. what's uh -huh. on the yeah. other side. Right. Yeah. That's a whole nother responsibility. Afraid of success. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I totally get that. So we are afraid of success. Well, sometimes I am, but, not anymore. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break. Our final break. We come back. We're going to share some more stories. So it's about time, Deb. Be right back. Now more than ever, family matters. And Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption and surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law Practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting LawyersForFamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. Take one. Behold! The Angry Giant. Try it again, Alberto. Behold the Angry Giant. Perfect. Good luck tonight. Behold the Angry Giant. Yay! Read me another one, Dad. This is WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no, that's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison, why? 
Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. (laughs) Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. Ready to help from her toes to her head. Just give her a shout. Call about town, Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now, back to the show. And welcome back to the fourth and final segment. It goes so darn fast. We are at the National Automobile Museum in Reno, Nevada. For those of you listening out of the Reno area, um, Raquel Riggle, one of my co-hosts, and we have Nisa. Did I get that right? Yes. I'm just going to keep saying it like that, Butler. Um, my other host. So this every month on the second Wednesday, you're going to have um, the three of us and in the future, you're going to have some other cool guests. So Nisa, can you maybe share a little bit of tidbit of who you're thinking about joining us and how they might help us along the path to the door? Yeah, I have um, just some other connections in our uh, area who are also just reaching out to vulnerable families and working with um, some marginalized populations. So um, we have possibly Grant Denton who will be joining us soon. Um, and then, uh, the, one of the founders of Awaken, um, oh, from our, I, that's amazing. And can what, people outside of Reno probably do not know right. it. So share a little bit about, about Awaken. Okay. Awaken is uh, a resource in our community. Actually, they're a home as well for, um, individuals who are kind of being sex trafficked. So it could be, um, for youth or just anybody who's traded um, sex for money. And so some of the services they provide are also case management, um, help to get on their feet and kind of just out of that life. Um, And just also just like we are just kind of providing hope that there is a way out of this. You don't have to stay in this. Um, You're not trapped. You're not stuck. And so kind of just helping them to find inspiration and self-worth and um, on their way to a better life. And we also mentioned, Raquel mentioned, that we're going to have some success stories as well, correct? Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to that. Just some of the people, you know, we want to check in with our people and, and just kind of see how they're doing and see, you know, what, what successes that they have to celebrate. We want to celebrate with them and continue to celebrate because it's, it's all deserving. I mean, every one of us is a success story in our own way, even if we did have this charmed life. I mean, you still have your, your setbacks and you're, you're moving forward. It's not just oh, I came from this really bad place. It, you know, there are people that had great lives and they didn't have to go through some of these struggles, but they still struggle in their own way. And I think that that needs to be mentioned too. I mean, you know, I mean, there could be something that is a trigger for them. We, we don't know, you know. Right. And so if you're listening, and, and I know that you are listening, and, you know, every, we're all out and about, like we said, in the community and people see us and they go, oh my God, they're happy, they're great. But nobody really knows what, is going on behind our facade under our onion, peeling back our layers. And so I know you're out there and I know you've had to walk a tough walk and you might be in a beautiful home and you might have this perfect job. And you know what though? You might still be struggling. And if you're in a place where you've gone through this, you're who we need because we want you to share your story. And it's sometimes it's hard and you're, you know, you may need to step outside your box, but your story of how you became who you were is going to help somebody who's on that road. It and makes trying. a difference. It does. Every it makes time. a huge difference. And I know I've been asked to share my story because I do have a stutter thing and I've had a lot of different things go on and um, it makes a difference. I, I'm, I don't remember the exact name who called me, but there was a mom who called me and said, my daughter, it was, it was somebody from church, Liz Tennant. She won't care. I think it was Liz Tennant. Um, her daughter was struggling with, confidence and doing something. And she said, Deb, would you mind if, can you just talk to her? You know, I've told her that, you know, she's seen you stutter before and then she sees you now 
And I said, of course, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm saying it right now. I mean, it could happen to me. It did happen to me in the show once. So we, even though we hit, we think where we're at, where we want to be, we can get knocked down any yeah, moment. It yeah. d- we don't know when it's going to happen. Right, yeah. So we really, or we can really, break that glass ceiling. Yeah. I mean, we, we have be sometimes the, just break it and go through it yeah. and know that somebody's here to catch you. So we want to be your net. These women here and their community partners want to help you. So if you're listening and you need any assistance or just have a question and you need to know where to go, how can we contact Nisa and Raquel? Well, you can reach out to us on Facebook. It's Family Hope Project um, is our Facebook page. You can always send a message or you can call or text uh, 775-404-0298. And of course, they can always reach out to you yes. right, with your platforms. You, you can get me on any of my About Town Dub. People message me, text me. My number's out there. I don't know. I, it's all you got to do. Is it's out there. <laughs> it, it's out there. So 775-741-2596 or at About Town Dub. And because sometimes you want to connect somebody you feel comfortable with first. Right. And say, you know, I have a question or I have a concern or my son or my daughter or my mom or right. my aunt. Or if you want to help us, if you want to donate, you wanna help if us. you want to give um, your time. Yeah. And I definitely know that as About Town Deb, one of my events, we will be hosting and we'll be contributing. I mean, the Cancer Foundation is one of mine, but I, I do support many other ones. So, um especially you guys are starting out and you have such a passion. So I definitely want to support you guys. But in all this supporting, I want people to get to know a little bit more about Nisa and Raquel, but mainly Nisa right now, because you've been on the show a lot. <laughs> yeah, people know and a little bit about me. We know a lot about you. <laughs> so I, I just want to um, ask you, what do you wish you would have known when you started out? Because this is a big passion of yours. What do you think, you know, you know what I mean? Yes. Okay, so just kind of going back to... Um, how I shared like uh, birth to five really shapes you. And so th- that's kind of like what I'm, I feel like I'm always up against. So I was also born to um, le- just a single mom who struggled herself with mental health. And so um, I had a brother who was 13 months older than me and we were just always on the streets, very low income, didn't have access to resources. Um, my brother entered the juvenile justice system early in his life. And unfortunately he passed away when I was um, 27 and pregnant with my second daughter. And so um, this is not like a, it's not just a single experience. It's very common for just the lack of resources and the experiences that we had. Um, so what I wish I had known when I had started out really life and then high school and then trying college again or just motherhood or overall is that um, most of the time it's just a, a grain of sand in the grand scheme of things. And I kind of tend to go sometimes dark or very anxious, you know, when, um, I feel like something is happening and I, I think it's going to just take over my life or now this is the end, but just, it's not usually a mountain. Uh, it's usually just a molehill and it's going to, we're going to get over it. Well, my next question is really important. And I, I think it's one of the most important questions. What's the most common reason for people failing or giving up? I feel like, uh, the most common reason for people failing is, is negative self-talk and, um, just oh, kind of I agree like with our that inner so voice, much. you don't understand like um, the way that you talk to your children is how they're going to talk to themselves. And so just kind of undoing that is takes a lot of self-work, which is so painful and it's frustrating, right? Like self-reflection is hard. So um, just changing your self-talk, I think, is what kind of uh, makes or breaks failure or... And changing or, the conversation in your household overall. Yeah. I mean, we can we can sit and just have those conversations. It's almost like Alexa listening to us all the time. You know, I mean, we just want to have this conversation that's more light and airy. And, you know, I've always changed the conversation with my kids instead of like, Oh, hi, how was school today? I say things like, Hey, what made you laugh? Or what was the funny kid in class? Or did you learn anything that you didn't know yesterday? Just something different to engage them on a different level. Yeah. Because I think, for me, it was generational parenting is where my parents lacked because they were so in just their ways. Um, you know, it's and, and it was their upbringing, which yeah. kind of catapulted into our yes. our upbringing. Yeah. And then sometimes it's easy to give up because it's hard to see like how far you've made it. It's hard to see the progress when you're in it and you don't know like there's a breakthrough right around the corner or something better is going to happen. And so you just this is too much. It's too heavy. So it's easier to go back to whatever yeah. you were doing before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> we are definitely keeping it real this show. And so one other question, who is your role model and why? 
My role model is Rosa Parks for all the obvious mm-hmm. reasons. But one thing that um, she said that I just always kind of take it back to that I have to like remind myself of is like, um, you must never be fearful about what you're doing when it's right. So sometimes I think like, okay, maybe this will fail. My dream will fail. And I get so anxious and hard on myself or um, it's hard to take myself back to like kind of how far I've come. But I just have to remind myself like, no, what I'm doing is right. And so I don't need to be anxious about this. Like if you're doing the right thing, it's just a, a great reminder. Like you're in the right place and just keep going. Ooh, I love it. Love it. Great advice. It's, oh, we're winding down. So because we're winding down, I'd love you to give your information one more time. Okay. So you can find us on Facebook at Family Hope Project, and you can always message us, or you can call or text anytime, 775-404-0298. And you can always message me, Raquel Riggle, R-I-G-G-L-E, and first name is R-A-Q-U-E-L. If you have questions, concerns, want to donate, anything really. And Nisa, same for you, I'm assuming. Yes. yes it's Nisa Butler. It's N-I-S-A-B-U-T-L-E-R. Now back to Raquel. So your passion is getting you into the home that fits your heart yes. and your family. Yes. So how do we get a hold of you? Because I want you to have somebody who I truly know who cares. It's a big deal to me. So Thank how, you. how do we get a hold of you? Um, you can text me, you can email me. Uh, my phone number is 775 775- Seven two two zero two one five, or you can email me at Raquel R A Q U E L at homeenv.com. Okay, so about Town Deb, you know how to get me. I want to thank both of you for becoming a part of City Talk with About Town Deb, and not just being a sponsor, but sharing your hearts and your souls with us and helping our community build each other up and making a difference. So if you're listening, we want you to tune in all the time to City Talk, but. This show is going to be totally different than any of our shows, and it really is going to be their show. As About Town Deb, I like to give as much. I mean, I'm more of a giver, so I want to, don't, in a sense, give you this hour to bring the people that we need to talk to, to make our community better. And I also want you to listen because we're going to have resources. No matter where you live, you're going to learn something about how can we help you get to where you need to be to open that door when you walk up to your door. So, um tune in. We will be back next week. And next week, it's going to be a little bit different. So next week, we're going to do like a um, wine and cheese pairing. And even though I have my own wine, I'm about helping everybody. So I'm going to talk about having an ambassadorship with many different people. So very cool. I don't know. It's about town Deb. It's <laughs> always about giving back. And I think together, no matter what we do, as you said, like with all the different resources, we need to work together and we need to support each other, even if we're all the same business. So no matter what you do, you matter and we love you and together we're one heart and thank you both again and we will see you next month 